Hi, it's Pastor Steve with Happy Thoughts here in beautiful Visalia, California. I'm here today with Alejandra. She is our Minister of Music at the Methodist Church, and she is uh, one of many staff who has come in to dialogue with me uh, concerning her history of faith. Specifically today, we're going to talk about uh, times when God uh, seemed especially close or powerful in her life. So um, we'll do a little background first. Alejandra, how long have you been at the Methodist Church? Uh, I've been here for two years. How amazing is it to work at the Methodist Church? It's great! It's amazing <laughs> all the time. I find, find the same thing. Um, okay, and before the Methodist Church, did, were, did you work at other churches? Uh, no, it was more volunteers. Okay, so. alright. Um, so, so this is your first gig where, where you are the, uh, the leader? Uh, not necessarily. I was a leader before. Okay. They just didn't pay if to be exactly. Okay, well, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we are delighted to have her on staff. I invite you to go to our YouTube channel and, and um, catch some of the, the videos. Alejandra really is the real deal, right? She is a, a professional a voice, and m more importantly, she is a practicing Christian who really cares about uh, um, conducting worship in a way that helps other people worship, and we certainly enjoy having her uh, on our staff and, and uh, with us in our ministry. So, Alejandra, to the point of the video, which is, um, uh, I ask all the staff members to think about uh, times when you have been especially close to God or when you've had kind of a, a breakthrough moment, and uh, what did you come up with in answer to that question? Um, so, I had thought about it, and I was thinking of all the different experiences that I've had. Um, I even brought it up to my mom, you know, because she helps me kind of straighten my thoughts because my mind runs in different places. <laughs> well, what did your mom say? <laughs> no, she said... Mika, no, no. <laughs> right. It's interesting, our relationship. Um, she'll ask me the question again. And it it helps me to understand a little better. Okay. You know, I, I, maybe it was something from since the, my mother's womb. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that that really helped me out to really bring one specific um, memory experience okay. that I've had. Um, uh, when I was eight years old, uh, my tia, my aunt, and I. We went to um, the hospital um, to visit a friend who had just had her baby. Um, so I, my idea and I, we were in the parking lot and we were going up to the hospital. And as I was going up the stairs, um, I heard celestial instruments, heavenly instruments. I heard instruments that I couldn't even, I can't even describe. Um, I even heard bells. Um, and it was just beautiful and it was loud it was just like booming in my ear and I was like what is going on you know it was just it was it was weird um and so I was so caught up in this that I I had to ask my tia if she also heard what I was hearing and, and she looked at me like as if I was crazy and she was like no I don't hear anything keep walking you know <laughs> Um, so I was like, something is weird. And it scared me a little bit because I was like, does this, I, I literally thought, am I dying? <laughs> so, Serious. Even as a child, you, you realized, well, oh, this is a big deal. Yeah. And, and I also, an, another thought came into my head of like, maybe someone is playing a trick on me and is booming their music really loud and they're just booming celestial type music you know that you with instruments that you really had never heard before exactly and a bell a constant right. bell sound you know was it yeah. a pleasing sound yes it was okay and and so scripturally right that that's right on uh, every time angels or heavenly uh, beings appear to humans what's the first thing they say Get up, quit being afraid. Right? Stop it. Right? We're, we're from we're from the good side. Don't be that's right. Don't be don't be afraid. We we have business to, to, to take care of. So so that's really in keeping, right, with, with the witness, the long witness of, of the church. So you were confused and you were scared and, and your tia apparently was not in a mood to listen to what she thought of as children's fantasy. But do you remember uh, on that day 
did it have an effect on you? I mean, for the rest of the day, did you ponder it, or or did it bring you peace, or what? What do you? What's your memory of that day? Um, afterwards, I guess I just I I placed it in my heart, and I didn't really talk about it to anybody because I didn't fully understand it myself of what happened. Well, you, you know, learned pretty quick that no, they, don't, they don't want to talk about it. Right? Yeah, for my dad, she's like, I don't want to hear nothing. Stop that. <laughs> okay. right. um, and, and that brings me to another experience that I've had. Um, when I was 16 years old, um, I was in a worship team at that time. I was playing the bass, um, and I was also singing. And at that time, we were rehearsing in the church, and we were um, playing the song, I Am a Friend of God, Friend of God. Um, and we were all like into it. We were in one accord, you know, like we were just, you know, delighting in the Lord's presence. And um, and then all of a sudden we heard these voices in unimaginable pitches, really high sounding voices and beautiful harmonies. And, and they were just loud and and all of us, all of us were trying to figure out where it was coming from. We thought that it was coming from the speaker, like maybe the speaker was wigging out. Um, we thought it was from the guitarist, like maybe his pedals were jacking up everything. Right. We, the wah-wah pedal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the wah-wahs can do crazy things. Um, we, thought, we thought everything, but everything was off or everything was working fine. Um, and then it just kept on going like we stopped because we couldn't really comprehend what was going on um, but it just kept on going it kept on going did you know right away oh this is that thing again this is this is what happened when I was a little girl perhaps I didn't put two and two together okay. until afterwards I'm very much the type of person where like I have to process things mm -hmm. You know, well, especially things like that, right? Because they're out of the ordinary. You can't yeah. slot them uh, easily. <laughs> so uh, I had a friend who was um, a Yamaha musician, uh, a flautist, um, so top level musician, and and um, she used to try to explain to me how music was different to her than it was for me or for most people. And, and the best she could do, she she would say, when I when I hear music or create music that uh, is really powerful for me, it appears to my heart like a color, mm. right? So, so music is a flow of a variety of colors when, when she really uh, loved it. And, and as you're talking, I'm thinking, yeah, that, that, that's interesting, right? She, she had, so she had a different way to experience what was otherwise common um, and, and part of that I've always attributed that's God's gift to her, right? So, mm -hmm. so music will always be different to her. Do you think, in, in a way, that that describes um, you in in this way? That's the way that God has to, to really break through to you, right? It's it's it needs to be uh, music. It needs to be in, in that kind of um, experience. You haven't been praying for it. You haven't been petitioning for it. It it just happens. But but that's how God knows He can He can break through to you. I never really thought of it like that. I just realized, you know, as a child, you know, you're more innocent, you're more op open-minded, you're more, you have an open heart to to the things of God. Right, he has, he has less obstacles, but still, um, he didn't appear to you in, in a, uh, in the fashion of a, an archangel no. or whatever, right? It came as music, which yeah. is really interesting. I assume it ate, eight you already knew you could sing but yes. you couldn't possibly have known for sure because you're eight that it was going right. to be your life yeah no 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 i i ate i actually wanted to be a doctor which is interesting <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but um at 16 i knew i wanted to do something at music yeah. with music um <clears throat> it is interesting though isn't it that, that right so so god who, who who created you in the first place and willed you into being and knows you like better than you know yourself knows um, this is how this is how we uh, manifest for Alejandra, right? Um, so, 
do you do you attribute meaning to those uh, episodes in your life? Like when you look back, do you think, oh, well, God was trying to communicate this to me, or, or do you hold it in, in a different place? I believe I hold it in a different place in the sense that, you know, God shows us who he is in different times of our life. Mm -hmm. that we don't fully understand the reason why but in his wisdom he knows you know why we need that experience yeah. that's right you know? um, so I, I, that's why like, I, I'm trying to think of like where I was at in those moments that I experienced mm -hmm. you know the the heavenly voices the heavenly the, the angels singing the, the heavenly it's instruments and they were at random times, but the one thing that I can say for sure is that my heart and my mind were open to the things of God. Okay. And and in the second experience that I that I experienced when I was sixteen, we were all in one accord, the worship team. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're describing not not a good rehearsal, but a spiritual um, uh, happening. Right yes. when you when you talk about being in one accord, so all the technical stuff lined up great. But what you're describing that you were all locked in on uh, the spirit of the song, or the, right? Yeah, that, that's fascinating. So there were no great directions given to you, right? So so these things happen, and, and they're they're not singing. Stop doing that bad thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, so. Listening to to your story, it, it seems like the the one effect is, is simply assurance, mm -hmm. right? So, so so you have had at least two experiences, probably more, where you, where they are supernatural, right? Um, one uh, other people did hear, the other uh, other folks uh, didn't, and and that is assurance, right? That that's just uh, God occasionally appears in in my life. Do do you? recall or lean into those memories at certain times in your life like if, if there's really hard things pressing on you or if there are like with COVID right I know you've been concerned about your parents and your friends when you're in a, a really hard place like that do you refresh yourself by remembering that's right God has has, has manifest and, and does that right is that a part of your spiritual journey um yes it, it is um I uh I always, you know, I have my moments where I feel very low, um, just like everybody else. Um, but when I, when, when, when the Holy Spirit, like, pops that little experience in my, in my brain, in my mind, I, I feel that assurance, and I, and I have this like, this goal, in a sense to want to experience that again. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it all goes back with having the open heart and the open mind to the things of God, you know, and and knowing that, that that will be our eternity, you know, always worshiping God, always praising God, you know, um, and, you know, the thought you know, today, actually, I was thinking the thought of eternity to the natural mind sounds kind of scary, you know? To, to a human mind locked in, in time, it yes. is scary. Yes, right? yes. But then I thought about it, and I, and, and I, began to, I began to just really think more in, in, in the spiritual and the supernatural that, you know... There is no time, That's right. and I'd rather, you know, have that assurance that God is with me, and that I will be with Him for eternity, than to be separated from Him for eternity. Right. You know, so that's a really nice way to, to, to think about it. Yeah. Um. So, what you're saying is is actually a scientific fact, right? So time, uh, time doesn't actually exist. 
we break our, our life into it because there's so many things that are routine and, and recur. But what we're saying about God always is this, that, that God created, um, if, if you're into, into science, right, the, uh, the explosion that, that brought all things into creation, and as those things move through space, that's what we call time. But God existed before time, and God exists beyond time. And so when we go to eternity, we enter into a state of being that literally we can't imagine because all of our life is governed by the thought of time, right? Mm -hmm. So we were talking before we came on about, um, I, I feel particularly old uh, uh, lately because my back is out and, and I, I am uh, uh, in a different stage of life. And when we talk about e eternity, that's a really nice thing. Um, for me, I find that uh, I am effectively seven years old Internally, right? I know I don't look at externally. But I'm still, still really a happy little kid, um, uh, enjoying life as much as I can, and and I see that quality in, in you also. And I hope that that's kind of a, a part of what's being promised, right? Is that that innocence or, or that uh, just okay being uh, re returns to us? Interesting. So, in the group where everybody heard the the singing and and the uh, uh, bells, was there ever any follow up? Like, do you, have, do you meet on the anniversary every year and everybody lights a candle and, and tries to pray the voices back into to vision? Or, or has anybody ever talked to you about it and said, did that thing really happen or uh, any kind of follow-up? So, you know, my sister, she was also there when 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 we all experienced that. And and sometimes we'll bring it up, we'll, we'll talk about it. And it's more of like a beautiful thing that, that we share. Nice. You know? Um, it's yeah, it's it's honestly really nice having you know a sibling to experience those things with you know because you know that you're not crazy. Um, so. you, you experience the other side of the equation with a sibling too, right? So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice thing. Uh, Alejandra's sister is a, a sweetheart and, and has sung occasionally at, at the church also. We've been, enjoyed having her. Alejandra, I, I thank you for taking the time to uh, share with us. I hope that uh, the folks tuning into to the blog will receive at least this, right? Uh, the, the promise that um, when, you, when you are available and, and really uh, probably long before you ever need it, God will make sure that he's manifest and, and, and that you can draw on uh, that experience. Uh, might be music, never was uh, for me, but the, the same types of experiences that I continue to draw on. Um, uh, again, uh, tune in on the YouTube channel for the church and, and uh, watch Alejandra lead music. Having heard her story and, and uh, getting to know her just a little bit more, you'll hear it differently, right? I, instead of just watching a musician at the top of her craft, and she is, uh, it, I hope it would give you the opportunity to, to know what you're seeing is a Christian who who is endeavoring to create an atmosphere of worship, not just for herself, but for everybody in the church. That really is a discernible difference in, in uh, what Alejandro brings to our church, and, and it's a privilege to, to work with her. So, God bless. Thank you for, for being on Happy Thoughts, and I will see you all next week.